that gets us to the tilt. Um, what we do is we have the patient resting already during the rest of the battery. So the patient has really been laying there for about 40, 35, 40 minutes before we even start the baseline for, for the tilt recording. Uh, we record a baseline routinely of five for research purposes, uh, 10 and 20 minutes, depending. And uh, during that time, continuously to record heart rate, blood pressure on a beat-to-beat -beat basis, and respiration. Um, <coughs> the patient is on a table where there's an armrest that allows the arm to be at heart level. So where we sense the blood pressure, which is at the finger, we want that at heart level before we tilt the patient up to make sure there's not a hydrostatic pressure uh, uh, confounding our blood pressure reading. And uh, we tilt the patient to 70 degrees. Um, that is really a compromise. Um, we want the tilt to be passive. If you go beyond 70 degrees, there's a chance the subjects will activate their muscle, and you get the muscle pump effect, and we want to avoid that. That is closer to active standing. Um, and um, once we re reach 60, 70 degree of tilt, we have about 90% of gravity exposure already. So you don't really need to go higher than 70 degrees in order to get almost maximal gravity exposure. Uh, we in our lab tilt typically five to 10 minutes, depending on the indication. We don't go longer than that. Our purpose is not to tilt a patient to syncope. We leave that to the cardiologist. We want to assess the, the autonomic nervous system. Uh, and in fact, we, we do have a, a cardiology department that does 45 minutes and drug-induced tilts, et cetera, but that's not the purpose of our autonomic lab. Here an example of uh, normal response. Um, you can barely tell where the patient was tilted up, right? You see a little bit of an increase in heart rate, not much change in systolic blood pressure, maybe a little bit of an increase in diastolic blood pressure, and then tilt back happens around here. In contrast to that, that's a patient with POTS, um, marked increase in heart rate with a relatively well-preserved blood pressure um, that did certainly not reach criteria for orthostatic hypotension, but there was a decline somewhat, particularly in the beginning. Um, patient with orthostatic hypotension, um, significant drop in blood pressure. Um, there is a heart rate rise that for a normal blood pressure would be more than adequate, but considering this amount of blood pressure drop, that heart rate response is relatively reduced. And here, a patient with vasovagal syncope. Uh, this patient is standing there. Nothing happens really until suddenly there's a precipitous decline in both blood pressure and heart rate, um, and the patient became uh, pre-syncopal or syncopal. In fact, I had a talk to that technician because they kept the patient up too long, right? I mean, at this point, you should have, you should have known there's no way of return. You could have probably avoided syncope. Uh, 